We're here at Unleash with Deb Mills Schofield, who gave an amazing presentation earlier. And a lot of what you were talking about that seems to be a common theme is it's networking, but the way you talk about building relationships the right way. Can you give us a little bit of a catalyst? Just for you, I mean, has that always been something you just did naturally? Did you stumble across it? Did someone teach you? Because it just seems to be in your DNA. Um, I think you're right. It's in my DNA. And I think it's probably because of how I was raised with my family being a network. Mm -hmm. So I was used to the family being all over the place. Um, and since it was family, you were networking to t see how they were, take care of. So it was always a thou mm -hmm. versus an I. And then as I got older and actually read um, the Jewish theologian, Martin Buber, who wrote a book, and part of it is I, thou, where okay. basically he distills it down to is it about me being the I or is it about thou being you. Okay. And so that was very much a part of how I was raised and then thought that you always think of the other first mm -hmm. and then yourself. That was the kind of parents that I had. So, so I think it is just naturally how I look at things and it's more interesting to talk to somebody and learn about them than it is to talk about me. And actually with that curiosity, that's another thing that you had mentioned. Can you ex go a little bit more beyond what you mentioned in the talk, how important curiosity is? So I am like really addicted to learning. I mean, I think it is a serious addiction, which if you have to have one, I think it's probably a pretty good one. Yes. Um, when I was a kid and we would ask a question or I would ask a question, my parents would answer it, but always in a way that led to another question. Okay. But then you would ask another question, and then you'd ask another question, and I think that just kind of helped instill that curiosity. I think it's also how I'm, again, wired my DNA. Mm -hmm. I just want to know and learn things that are so random, so seemingly disparate, and figure out how to put them together. It's like all these pieces of a puzzle, and then, well, how could they fit, and what could they fit, and who else has a piece, and how could I bring them in, and that whole thing. What about for the people who aren't like you? They're, they realize they have <laughs> to network. No, sorry. <laughs> I wasn't going to say it. <laughs> you re they realize they have to network. Mm -hmm. And let's just leave it as they have good intentions, but right. they're not quite there. They're still in that what can you do for me phase. How can they practice that? How can they practice the Tao? How can they practice actually being interested and in talking with other people and not at them? So I did this talk on networking every year to a group of uh, young women at Brown. Mm -hmm. So they're women in their senior year that are part of a program where us women alumni mentor them. Okay. And one of the things I tell them to start practicing doing is every day try to do something nice for someone else. And it doesn't have to be like a whole big deal, like you're you know, walking down the hall in the engineering building or whatever and just smile. Okay. Or um, say hi. Or now Brown has this cool thing now, this website where you can put up a compliment to someone. Um, but just do something small. And again, you know, smiling at someone is huge. So if you can start creating a habit of once a day, then maybe twice a day, doing something nice for someone else, and it doesn't have to be big, mm -hmm. I think that's a way to start developing that habit of the thou versus the I. And then the other thing that you can do is just role play. So sit down with a friend and pretend you're meeting and go through the, you know, hi, I'm Deb. Nice to meet you. Hi, I'm Mark. Nice to meet you. So, Mark, tell me, you know, not tell okay. me about you. So, Mark, you know, what are you doing? What do you like to do? What are you whatever? So start it practicing. I think you practice to make a habit. What's that middle ground of strengthening? I'm doing something right and I want to do more. What should people do to strengthen the network once, they're, once they have a decent one? One really critical thing, which is incredibly hard and difficult, is following up. Tell me more about that. And this is where most people fall down, and it is really hard. So you and I may meet, mm -hmm. and we'll exchange business cards, and we'll talk, and that's fine. But there's no real immediate thing that could happen from that. Yes. Well, what if I, two months later, or three months later, just ping you and say, hey, how you doing? What's new? So what if they're interested in sail racing. Maybe you could then email them after the America's Cup victory where we finally got the cup back, some cool article about the technology of the Oracle boat. 
create a schedule, and it's really hard, but it's really important, because most things that are really important are really hard, mm -hmm. of keeping up with your contacts, with the people you've networked with. Just to say, hi, what's new? Or, you know, gee, thank you for talking to me two months ago. Here's where I am now, and here's what I learned from you that two months later I'm still thinking about. What are a few other ways to do that, to stay relevant? Because I know that's something that will come up in conversations with people about following up, and just because... We might have talked about a random sports activity. Mm -hmm. It's different to be relevant than, hey, we talked about the White Sox or whatever it might right. be, but you're not passionate about. So listening to what they're interested in, how else can you stay relevant to people? Um, by adding or providing some information for them either they may not know mm -hmm. or they might not have thought of that way. Or even if you don't know them well enough to know that, just, you know, gee, I saw the, the Red Sox one, and I know you're a big fan. Congratulations. Just a little touch point that says, I remembered something about you as a human being mm. or your profession or your work or something and thought you'd be interested in this.